Oh yeah. Whoa, baby. That's a big one. All right, made it back to the truck. It is officially raining and we've got some nastiness headed our way. You can keep a secret, right? You know those days when you're just sick of working and you just wanna go fish? I think today's one of those days. So we're just gonna dip out, give responsibility the middle finger. We're just gonna pack up the truck, head out. I've been doing some research over the past few weeks and there is a stretch of one of my favorite rivers that's supposedly fishing hot right now. I have fished this stretch of the river one other time when I was just passing through for like 30 minutes. Funny enough, I actually caught a fish on my first cast. And for those 30 minutes, it was fantastic. So I'm excited to get back. And this stretch of the river is about four hours away from my house. So I did have to do a little bit more research. I found a nice stretch of public land that I can fish, a couple of campgrounds. I read some fishing reports. Apparently the terrestrials are just nuts this year. So I've got a bunch of those ready to go. But enough of me blabbing. I'm sick of working. You're here to watch some fishing. So let's roll. We made it. So after four hours, we've arrived. We've got some beautiful sagebrush. The river is actually just over there. Uh, I'm gonna set up camp real quick. I, th I think future Alex is gonna thank me for that. I'm probably gonna be pretty tired once I get off the river tonight. So I'm gonna set it up real quick right now. All right, we've got our cozy little tent set up. We've got some firewood, got our camp chair. Just keeping it really simple this trip, but I'm ready to go hit the water. All right, waders are on, rod is put together. We are ready to start fishing. But I just wanted to emphasize the point I made earlier. I'm right next to a campground. I'm right next to a main road. I'm right next to where that public land starts. So you can hear this truck. I'm right next to a main road. <laughs> and so, where there's campgrounds, where there's main roads, where there are boat ramps, where people are putting their drift boats in and out, they're probably heavily fished areas. And so I think I'm gonna hike up maybe a mile or two away from here and hit some spots that maybe don't get fished as much. Um, potentially there could be larger fish, maybe fish more willing to hit flies. I could be making this up, I don't know. <laughs> but we're gonna hike up a couple miles and see what happens. Man, whose idea was it to hike two miles in the freaking sun in the middle of August? <laughs> it's pretty hot, but I think it'll be worth it. First impressions. River looks great, crystal clear. It's actually a lot lower than the last time I was here, which makes it easier to wade. Some of the best advice I've ever gotten is you don't rig up your rod at the truck. You wait till you get to the water and you see what bugs are hatching. Maybe there's some fish rising. You pick up a few rocks, see what's under them. And right off the bat, I've seen some caddis fluttering around. I've seen a couple of yellow sallies. And so that's starting to give me some information on what I should tie on. There's a couple of rocks right here. I'm gonna pick them up and see what we can find. Looks like we've got some caddis casings under the rock. So we've definitely got some caddis. That's the smallest little mayfly nymph I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I saw that tiny mayfly nymph, but most of the other stuff was just caddis casings. Now, 
I pretty much am clueless when it comes to this river right now. I'm not sure if the fish are hanging out in the shallow stuff, the deeper stuff, if they're hitting dry flies, if they're hitting nymphs. And so the best way to prospect for fish that I found is a dry double dropper rig. Now, yes, it's harder to cast. You're setting yourself up for some tangles probably, but it's super effective because I'm able to have a dry fly on the top. So if there's any fish that are hungry for a dry fly, they can come up and eat that. I have a middle nymph that maybe I'll throw in like a caddis emerger, something that looks like it's coming up to the surface. Maybe there's fish hanging out in the middle of the water column. That fly is going to take care of those. And then I'm going to put something heavier. I'm going to drag the bottom, see if there's any fish hanging out near the riverbed. And I'm going to throw on the GoPro so that you can see exactly what I'm doing and what water I'm working and the flies that I'm tying on and all that. So I'll put on the GoPro and let's start fishing. All right, we are all rigged up with our dry double dropper rig. I've got a nice chubby Chernobyl for the top. Uh, I've actually seen some grasshoppers, heard some grasshoppers. So great little grasshopper imitation, July, August, September. It's just calling for a terrestrial. <laughs> and then I've got a little caddis emerger for my second fly. And then I tied up some uh, tungsten bead pheasant tails last night. It's just a, I mean, it's a classic fly for a reason. I've actually killed it this summer with this fly. I'm looking at this hole. We've got a couple of rocks right here. There's some good seams on the outside of the pocket behind the rocks. We've got some awesome riffles right in this area. And then right up there, we've got a shelf. So trout love transitions. Anytime it goes from shallow to deeper water, they're usually hanging out right there or faster to slower water. That's what a seam is, right? So I'm just gonna work every single spot that could have a fish in it. I might even work the spots that don't look that fishy and we'll just see if we can find something. Boom, first cast. <laughs> How about that? Oh, that happened last time I was here. That's hilarious. Awesome. Took the pheasant tail on the bottom. Nice little brown trout. All right, he was just right on the outside of this rock, pretty close actually, so. And he hit that pheasant tail, so it was right at the bottom. Ooh. Oh. Let's try this other, let's try these riffles. Well, I guess there is this little pocket right behind these rocks. Let's work close to far. Oh, might be a little too far to the right. Not enough current there. Oh no, I just hit a bush. Rookie mistake. I thought I was a lot further away from this willow tree. Was not, didn't check my back casting room before I cast and I actually hit one of the tree branches and I have no idea where my flies went. I looked for like five minutes, nowhere to be found. So I re-rigged, same exact rig, Chernobyl, caddis merger, pheasant tail, caught a fish on the first cast, so no point in changing now. Um, I did gain some more intel though a lot of yellow sallies hanging out in the tree branches. So if these aren't working, it's probably gonna be my next step is tying on some kind of stonefly nymph. So let's get back at it. Let's work out here for a second before we get too carried away. Just a nice little foam line on these riffles. Just work that foam line. Foam is home. Trying to get a nice drag free drift. Mend it a little bit. Oh, I just saw a fish rise over there to the right. 
Sweet. Saw him rise right over there. I don't want to land my fly line on top of him, so I'm probably actually going to take a few steps to my left and try and land the fly line here and have my fly land to the right a bit more. And then he was about even with this rock here in the water, so probably got to land it a little bit past him. And then, yep, just like that. And... Nope, that might have landed right on top of him. That wasn't a very good cast. And nothing. I just think I landed my fly right on top of him. Not a great first cast. Got to make that first cast count. Back up a few steps. Don't want to false cast too many times. Spook fish. Hmm. Spot looks too good not to get a fish out of it. Uh-oh, caught on my bag. Ah! They always know! <laughs> Fly line got caught on my bag. I was dealing with that and he came up and hit the Chernobyl. Classic. I don't know how the fish know, but they do. All right, here we go again. Oh yeah, that's a fish. Hit the nymph again. Oh, little, little guy, we're good. All right, just keep working our way up. I'm gonna fish this right side again before I start stepping up into it. This looks too good. There's gotta be a fish in there. Boom, yes there is. Oh, just a little guy. Oh, he got off again. That pheasant tail is barbless, so I lose any tension on that sucker and they're gone. There's a nice little seam. Oh yeah, come on, that was great. Give it to me. Come on, oh! Hit the chubby, I missed him. I don't think he actually took it. He just, he just licked it. There's that fish that we was rising earlier. Just a little baby rainbow. Hit the caddis emerger. Nice. Just a little guy, cute little guy. Put him right back. All right. And here we go again. One thing in these bigger rivers, you can kind of take the river and turn it into a, a bunch of smaller rivers. Like right here, I got a bunch of pocket water, right? So I shorten my line and I'm just flinging little casts in there and I'm high sticking it seeing if anything is hanging out behind these rocks no luck so far and come up to this next one same thing shorter line just fling it in there high stick it drag free drift it's kind of like i'm just fishing a smaller creek just happens to be right in the middle of a big river Nope. What about this stuff? Oh, yep. That's an eat on the dry fly. Bunch of stone fly casings too on these rocks. Another sign to tie on a stone fly. Maybe I'll do that. All right. We had some uh, some clouds moving in the distance. Hoping uh, I don't get rained on tonight. I just brought the tent. <laughs> Might be sleeping in the truck. <laughs> so that's fun. Oh, that was a fish. Oh, nope. First one was definitely a fish. Not a big one, but a fish. All right, let's throw one up by this and see what happens. There 
we go. Oh, he got off. <laughs> uh, again, this little stonefly pattern has that barbless hook. So if I don't have tension on it, it slips right off. That's right. He was just a little guy. Be a bit more devastated if it was the 20 incher I'm looking for in here. Oh, came up and licked the Chernobyl again. They just don't want to take it fully. There we go. Little, little baby fish again. Oh, and he's off. Awesome. Yeah, you know how it was like a bright sunny day before? Yeah, we've got some storm clouds rolling in, so. I'm probably gonna start making my way back. Just, if I see a really good haul, I'll stop and fish it, but I don't know. So you wanna know the funniest part about this whole thing? I'm setting up the tent, I'm like, do I put the rain cover on? Nah, it's such a beautiful day out. There's no way it rains. I checked the weather yesterday. Look what happens. You catch a fish on the first cast and you say that it's sunny and then you get a rainstorm. <laughs> I might need to hustle back because my sleeping bag's in there, my blanket's in there. That gets wet, I'm kind of done for. So, <sighs> I don't know, if there's a really good hole, I might have to stop. <laughs> All right, made it back to the truck. It is officially raining and we've got some nastiness headed our way. Well, there used to be a tent there and some firewood there and a camp chair there, but there's a storm coming right for me. I'm probably gonna sleep in the truck if I decide to stick around. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet. Uh, I'm gonna get in the truck. Unfortunately, my food was some chicken quesadillas that I wrapped in tin foil before I left and I was gonna cook it on the fire, but I don't think a fire is going to happen with this rain. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. We'll see. Good morning. <laughs> that was not the most enjoyable night I've ever had. <laughs> um, that storm rolled in, lots of lightning, started pouring rain. I could look in the distance and the storm had come from the west, like the southwest. And I could look to the southeast and the clouds were a lot lighter. I made the decision to drive about an hour southeast to another section of the river that I'm a lot more familiar with that I fish all the time. That decision paid off because I got here, it was trickling, but it wasn't, it wasn't pouring rain and there and the lightning was in the distance behind me. I was able to put together a little fire, cook my quesadillas. The bugs were nasty though. Oh man, I don't know what what was out there, mosquitoes, moths. So when I put my headlamp on, it was just nasty. But got my quesadillas cooked real quick, ate those, put my seat back, got my blanket, and slept right here in the cab of the truck. It is 6.32 in the morning. So I'm gonna cruise downstream a little bit, throw my waders on, and start fishing. So in the heat of the battle last night, <laughs> My rush to get out of there. I, my nippers got caught on a bush somewhere. I don't know where those went. I went to snip off my flies when I got to the truck. Nowhere to be found. And then I put my rod in the, in the cab real quick. Didn't put it in the case. And I slammed one of the sections in the door. <sighs> Luckily I have a backup rod, so we could still fish today. 
All right, I'm gonna grab my bag, throw on the camera gear, cross the river, and we'll start fishing. So you uh, may have noticed that I'm not fishing anymore, I'm back in the truck. And I would say, that is very observant of you. All right, so here's the deal. I put in some good, honest, hard work for about an hour and a half, two hours. I worked that run pretty good, top to bottom. Switched my flies a couple times. There just wasn't much happening. I, I didn't even get a nibble. And to just put it in perspective, last time I was here, about a month ago, I showed up to the river about the same exact time, and there was PMDs, caddis, and yellow sallies all hatching at the same time. The water levels were a lot higher today than they were last time, and the water felt a little bit warmer too. So that just goes to show you that water conditions and bug activity can change pretty quick. Do I think if I maybe would have gone to a few more spots and switched up my flies and maybe put in a few more hours, do I think I could have gotten into some fish? Probably. I mean, I fish this water quite often and I just wasn't feeling it. What does intrigue me is there's another river in the area that I've had my eye on for a little while. It's kind of on the way home. And so I thought, well, this would be a great time to go to plan C <laughs> and let's cruise over to this river and check it out and see what's happening. So that's what I'm doing. I just pulled up to the river and there's some bugs hatching. I just saw a fish jump out of the water right down in that pool. I mean, water is crystal clear. I think we made a good decision coming here. So um, water is a lot smaller, river is a lot smaller. So wading is gonna be a bit more manageable. Um, I'm excited. So I just set up my rig. I've got a dry dropper. Um, why not dry double dropper? Well, you can see there's a lot of like grassy banks and sticks in the water. And if I have two nymphs on, I can't get it as close to the bank with my dry fly. A lot of the times there's trout hanging out right next to those grassy banks. And so I wanna get my, my hopper, my Chernobyl, as close as I can to those grassy banks. And so if I have two droppers on, more chance of me putting my nymphs right in the bush and getting caught up in the bush. So um, that's why I'm just going dry dropper. And then I've got that pheasant tail as my dropper, uh, tungsten bead on it. So it'll just sink real quick. And I've been killing it on this fly this summer. So it's, it's more of a confidence pattern than matching the hatch right now. And if the pheasant tail doesn't work, that's when I'll pick up a few rocks, see what's living underneath them and then make a, fly selection based off of that. But right now we're just gonna go dry dropper and see if we can get a fish. All right, so I'm looking at this spot and we've got a deeper area right here, slower moving water. And then we've got some nice grassy banks and then a little uh, at the head of this pool, there's some faster water coming into it. and prime spot is going to be right up against that seam right where the faster water is coming into this pool um, i'm probably still going to work this back end of the pool the tail of the pool um, just to see if anybody's hanging out i did see a fish when i first pulled up i did see a fish he jumped right out of the water up by this uh this bush so um yeah i'm gonna work the whole area and see if we can get into one Uh, 
That water is moving really slow. <clears throat> oh! <laughs> Don't you just love it when you go to recast and there's a fish on the end of your line? <laughs> he hit the pheasant tail. All right, little white fish. Send him right back. You love to see it. See that Chernobyl twitch a, a bit? I think it's actually a little more shallow over towards that edge than I think it is. As I, you see that twitch? I think that was the nymph just hitting the bottom. See that again? Doesn't look like a take to me. I'm surprised because it's so deep right here. I would think that it's kind of a, a drop off ledge over next to those grassy banks, but. The closer I get, it's looking like it isn't that deep. Yeah, see, my nymph is just, as soon as I hit that edge, it's just getting caught up. I think I gotta change my nymph. It's just too heavy. Oh, that's a fish. <laughs> Smacked it. That was awesome. Nice little rainbow. Oh, man. Got a little bit of fighting him for his size. All right, we are on the board with a rainbow and a white fish. Do white fish actually count as a fish? I'll let you decide. All right, I'm gonna change this nymph, maybe something a little smaller. It just looks like this river is not super deep. And so I think that tungsten bead's a little much. Switched out that dropper. Now I got a little zebra midge. It's actually Spencer's. He calls it the magic midge. I stole it from the last time we were fishing. Don't tell him, okay? <laughs> but it's essentially a brown, Zebra midge has a little bit of flash on it. Works great. Um, has a tungsten bead on it, but it's smaller. So I don't think it's gonna sink as fast. I don't know, let's see if that works. Nothing, okay. Now we have area of really really slow moving water so i could probably see a fish if there's one in here so i'm gonna head up to this higher ground kind of sneak around and see if i can see anything and if i can't i'm probably gonna move up to some faster water so i'm just cruising the bank right here just looking for any rises or I mean, even if I spook a fish, I'm not gonna be that mad about it. Okay, maybe if it's like a 25 incher, you have the right to be mad about it for a, a few seconds. But because I've never fished here, I'm still trying to figure out where the fish are hanging out. Are they in this slow stuff? Are they not in this slow stuff? And so I'm just cruising the bank. If I see any rises, that's a good sign. If I spook a fish, that's a good sign but I'm not really seeing much happening on this slower stuff. It's not super deep. It's probably like one or two feet deep. So I would be surprised if there was a fish in there. It looks deeper right here. You've got a kind of what we, what we talked about earlier, a shelf. So it's shallow, drops down to this deeper hole. So there is some faster moving water right up there. I might hop down in the water and throw a few casts. I might have gone a little too light on the nymph. Went from too heavy to too light. I haven't even caught up on the bottom once with the zebra midge, so you have to imagine that's probably not deep enough. All right, let's move up. Ooh, I just saw a fish rise. Yep, we're moving up. All right, so we're coming up on a pretty interesting little spot. You've got really slow water 
and then it's like a cement block dam kind of thing going on and then there's a bunch of different seams and i actually saw a fish rise right up in the middle of it um i switched out that zebra midge i tied on a bigger prince nymph um why prince nymph because they're awesome <laughs> and it's similar to the size of the pheasant tail i was using but it's got a brass bead on it instead of a tungsten and so it's not going to sink as fast as that tungsten bead but it's still going to sink more than the zebra midge so um you might ask well why would i all why wouldn't i always use tungsten beads well this is a great example of the tungsten bead was just sinking like a rock and i need something that sinks a little bit less but still sinks so we'll throw this up we'll just work this whole area and maybe someone is willing to play somebody wants the prince nymph oh yeah whoa baby that's a big one holy <laughs> yep he wanted the prince nymph Woo! oh gosh <laughs> I was not expecting a fish like that in here. Holy crap. All right, let's get this sucker netted. Oh, whoa. stay out of there. Get downstream of him a little bit. Oh, he saw me. Oh, he is not happy. Oh, goodness. Boom. <laughs> Well, I didn't expect that one. That was like a 19, 18, 19 inch rainbow. Not very fat, but he was super long. And so I guess the, the real question is, I think there's another one of those in there. All right, here we go, round two. I still can't believe he was just in this stuff right here. That's crazy. Let's see if there's another one. Let's see if he has a friend. That's another good fish. I was gonna recast. Another nice rainbow. Stay out of those rocks. He's trying. The old recast hook set. <laughs> and then we will Net him. Boom. Awesome. All right, we got another one. That was probably 15, 16 inches. Another good fish. That was such a subtle take. I, I didn't even see the take. That's how subtle it was. I went to recast and he had it in his mouth. So that's pretty crazy. Sometimes it's a fish and you get lucky like that. So. Oh, that was another good one. Dang it. All right, battery died on the GoPro mid sentence back there, but I didn't catch another fish out of there. I'm gonna throw one more battery in it. That's all I got left. We'll keep going and see if we can get into some more fish. All right, got ourselves. Two good looking holes. You got one over here on the right. You got a nice little foam line. Goes from shallow to deep. And then that little chute right there might be the ticket. I mean, I did know that there were some big rainbows in here, but the first time you come to a river, I just, I don't expect a fish like that. Just because I haven't really put in the work to figure out where they are, what they're eating but sometimes you get lucky. 
I think Spencer actually talked about that in the podcast this week where it was all about how to catch big fish and more times than not it's just luck it's good drift putting yourself in a spot where there are actually big fish in that river and then just cast after cast after cast just putting the odds in your favor all right i'm getting a little close to this spot on the left i don't want to spook anything if they're there so i'm probably going to transition over to the left side now just work near to far so we got a nice little seam here on the right side oh yeah another good fish awesome Prince Nymph for the win again let's go so that was on the right seam might as well throw another one up in there he was in the f he was just right on the edge of that faster water. I would say he was more in the fast water than he was in the slow. It is crazy to me that I still haven't had a good hard Chernobyl take today. It's very surprising. For the size of this river, for the grassy banks, I mean, the fish are eating. Guess they just want the Prince Nymph. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no. Right as I talked about that freaking. Oh, he came up and ate the Chernobyl, slipped through his mouth, hit him on the Nymph, came out. How is that even possible? <laughs> no! Man, I'm just thinking about that Chernobyl eat. That's so sad. I didn't get him. I think I set the hook too early. I've been thinking about it. And that's why it went from the Chernobyl, hooked him with the nymph, and then the nymph got off. I just think, I didn't wait long enough. Got too excited. Oh, okay. This looks really money. We'll sneak up here and we'll just fling one in. Oh yeah, that's a fish. Oh no, again. Oh, he took the whole Prince Nymph. No way. Oh, bad knot. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that right there. That knot is just busted. So what can we learn from this? Check your knots after every fish. Give it a little tug. All right, let's tie on another one. We reloaded the Prince Nymph. I only had one left of this size, so obviously it's gonna work because the fish always eat the fly that you only have one of, right? That's usually how it happens, and then you lose it on a bush, and then you don't catch fish the rest of the day. <laughs> oh yeah, good fish. Got him. I wonder if it's the same one. I might get my Prince Nymph back. Oh, stay out of there. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Oh yeah, really nice rainbow.
So let's just work this edge all the way up to the shelf. And then we might call it a day. I'm kind of like to that point where I feel like I've caught some great fish and it's been a good day. And I actually need to go edit the roll cast video for the master class, which I haven't done. Don't tell anyone, <laughs> but I gotta get that ready for Sunday. Boom, right on the edge over there. Took the prince name. These, these little ones, they fight hard. They fight good. Awesome. Oh, and the fly came right out of his mouth. We'll just send him right back. And phew. All right, well, I mean, we gotta catch one more, right? <laughs> every flagler ever. Another fish. Oh, better, better fish. Awesome. Again, hanging right on the edge, right up against that bank. Another prince. Oh, he came off. Starting to get a little windy here. Making that cast a bit tougher. I will say I haven't fished. I haven't fished a rod other than the fly flinger for a while and I'm missing it right now. This thing feels like a freaking broomstick. Oh, what just happened? I'm stuck on it twig and a fish <laughs> oh came off miracle <laughs> oh that was funny crazy oh. oh yeah super pretty rainbow nice and the hook came out again we love that another pretty rainbow bye thank you Well, I hope you had as much fun as I did today because that was that was a blast. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Showing up to a river you've never fished before, hooking into some fish, beautiful day. Thought I was going to get rained out. <laughs> Obviously, we didn't expect to end up here, but I had a blast. And if you guys enjoyed this type of like adventure style vlog type fly fishing video, this is my first time doing this and I want to make videos that you guys want. So if you enjoyed this, leave a comment below. I would also love it if you left a comment below something that you learned. I learned lots of things this, the last two days. I mean, have a plan B, C, D, E. <laughs> um, don't jam your fly rod in the door of the truck. And if you do have a spare, if you're doubting the river conditions, sometimes it pays off to go to a different river. Just Lots of lessons I learned along the way. And that's the great thing about fly fishing is there's always more to learn. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about fly fishing, we actually have an entire beginner fly fishing masterclass. And if you haven't seen that already, you can check it out right here.